the U.S. can no longer trust China. Bold words are backed by bold action. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Last week, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo gave a big speech about China at the Richard Nixon Presidential Library. And apparently, it can only be described as filled with ideological bias. Oh, sorry, that's the Reuters headline. Here's the Chinese state-run media headline. It's easy to get confused. Now, to be clear, it wasn't technically Reuters or the Global Times saying Pompeo's speech was full of ideological bias. They were both just quoting the same Chinese foreign ministry spokesman. Ah, new guy. I guess there's a lot of turnover. I mean, it doesn't seem like a fun place to work. Unless you're Zhao Lijian. He seems to be having a great time on Twitter. Anyway, the point is, Pompeo made a speech about China, and it was filled with some serious ideological bias. For example, this. We gave the Chinese Communist Party and the regime itself special economic treatment, only to see the CCP insist on silence over its human rights abuses as the price of admission for Western companies entering China. That's so biased. I mean, Pompeo calls it corporate self-censorship. But from another perspective, it's just corporations serving the market, which they can only do if they obey the censorship demands of the powerful regime that controls that market. Won't someone please think of the corporations? For decades, U.S. policy has been to engage the Chinese Communist Party as if they're a normal government as if they're a government that plays by the rules, honors agreements, and upholds the stuff in its constitution. Now, clearly, this has not been the case. So why has the U.S. done this? But now, things are changing. President Reagan said that he dealt with the Soviet Union on the basis of trust but ver verify. When it comes to the CCP, I say we must distrust and verify. We. Wow. Distrust and verify? I mean, what's not to trust from the benevolent communist leadership that made smart use of wasted islands in international waters, helped more than a million Muslims concentrate better, and even brought Tibetans more opportunities for reincarnation? If you look at it that way, what the Chinese Communist Party is doing is just a matter of perception. Well, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo wants to change that perception. We must start by changing how our people and our partners perceive the Chinese Communist Party. We have to tell the truth. We can't treat this incarnation of China as a normal country just like any other. Wait a minute. That's what I've been saying for like eight years. I guess people do pay more attention to the Secretary of State than some guy on YouTube. It's not like I control U.S. foreign policy. If I did, then I would turn all of France's castles into bouncy castles. What's that, Shelley? The U.S. can't control France's castles? <laughs> if I were Secretary of State, we would. Anyway, let's go back to perceiving the true nature of the Chinese Communist Party. What Pompeo said is significant, because if we can't treat China as a normal country, then the era of U.S.-China blind engagement is over. Look, we've all been there. Maybe your parents set you up, or maybe it was a matchmaker. But one day, almost 50 years later, you realize that this relationship is just not working anymore. Hopefully before you've lost all your money and intellectual property and personal freedom. And that's why Pompeo's speech is a big deal. It shows how the U.S. government has fundamentally changed its view on how to deal with China. It's the U.S. government acknowledging that 50 years of engagement didn't work, and that now it's time to see communist China as a threat to our economy, security, and freedoms. And if we don't act now, ultimately, the CCP will erode our freedoms and subvert the rules-based order that our societies have worked so hard to build. If we bend the knee now, our children's children may be at the mercy of the Chinese Communist Party, whose actions are the primary challenge today in the free world. Or, 
As my favorite Chinese state-run media, the Global Times, puts it, that's crazy. And also, it means war. Not that Pompeo threatened war. He did not. I think Chinese state-run media is projecting. But I suppose that's just a matter of perception. So what does Pompeo's so-called crazy speech mean in terms of actual U.S. policy on China? Well, his words lay out the U.S.'s overall strategic approach and the reasons for it. But for months, various parts of the U.S. government have been taking real action to counter the increasing threat from the Chinese Communist Party. For example, the U.S. has blocked party-controlled Huawei from working on America's 5G network and has been pushing U.S. allies to do the same. The U.S. closed the Chinese consulate in Houston, Texas, because it was reportedly spying on Americans. The U.S. plans to expel Chinese grad students who have ties to China's military schools as a way to protect American research from espionage. And the U.S. recently sent two Navy aircraft carrier strike groups to defend international shipping lanes in the South China Sea. Yeah, it looks like that phase two trade deal with China is not going to happen anytime soon. So while Mike Pompeo's speech is full of bold statements, it's not empty talk. It's backed up by what the entire U.S. government has been doing to turn those statements into reality. And I don't think that's a reality the Chinese Communist Party is going to enjoy. And now I'll answer a question from one of you, a fan who helps us keep this show going by contributing through the crowdfunding website Patreon. Anthony Zolman asks, Hey Chris, how much to put the question hat on your head after reading? Well, Anthony, based on your contribution, that'll be a dollar per episode. Thanks for your question. And thank you for watching. Be like Anthony and go to patreon.com slash China Uncensored and support this show. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.